So if you want to make a game for Android, then I don't actually recommend that you use Android Studio. Instead, it makes a lot more sense to use something like Unreal or Unity, those being game engines that already have lots of the physics and lots of the behavior of different game elements in place for you and that have a nice graphical interface to make things really nice and simple. I've talked on this channel a fair bit about using Unity for game development. It is the preferred method. It's the most popular game engine on the Play Store, but Unreal 4 is the biggest competitor to Unity. Either way, whichever one you choose, both of these are great tools for Android game development that make everything really simple and easy and are really flexible. You can create anything that you can think of pretty much. Of course, you need to get started somewhere though, and the first time you boot up Unreal 4, it's kind of like, oh, it's uh, got a lot of windows, a lot of stuff going on, it's quite confusing. There are lots of tutorials out there, but quite a lot of them involve a lot of preamble, a lot of setting up, a lot of technical jargon that you don't really need to know right away. Ain't nobody got time for that! And so in this video, I want to once again show you how to get something quite impressive up and running in just seven minutes. So it's not going to be a full game, you probably won't want to sell this, it won't even have enemies or levels or anything like that, but you will have a basic platform that you can control with touchscreen controls, you can jump around, have your own animations, your own sprites, and my hope is that this is going to serve as enough of a starting point so that you can get a bit excited about Unreal development and also so that you can understand the big picture of how everything works, then you can build from there by using those other more granular tutorials. So without any further ado, let's get started and build an Android game using Unreal in just seven minutes. To get started, first you're going to need to create a new project. You'll see we have lots of options available to us which will be suitable for different types of game. We want to choose 2D side scroller, then set it for mobile or tablet with maximum quality and including the starter content. The top tab should say Blueprint rather than C++, as this means we won't need any coding in order to get things up and running. Once that's finished, you'll see that you already have a playable platform game. You've got a character, you've got platforms. Hit play and click on the viewport, and you'll be able to run around, jump, and watch the pretty animations using the spacebar and arrow keys. And so there you have it, your first 2D game in just 20 seconds. <laughs> Lols, okay, so obviously we're gonna be doing a bit more than that. More specifically, we're going to customize all these elements that are already here so that you can turn this generic prototype into the basis for your unique game with your own graphics and animations. To create new actors for our game, the generic term for any game object, I'm using the existing sprites folder. Drop a PNG or other image file into there using the file explorer, then right click on it and go to sprite actions, create sprites. Now head to the Blueprints folder, right click again, this time anywhere in the folder, then select Create Basic Asset, Blueprint Class, and finally Actor. This is a class that will allow us to create lots of different iterations of the same object, say a platform. If you're familiar with Unity, it's the equivalent of a prefab. Call this floor tile or tile or something like that. Now double click on that new Blueprint class to open up the editor. In the top left, select Add Component, and then choose Sprite. You can search, it's quicker. Now select that new element in the components window and then drag and drop your platform sprite into the sprite box. You can now see that the tile is part of your platform. Don't forget to adjust the scale if your sprite isn't already the perfect size. Click save then return to your game. Once you've done that, you can simply drag and drop this new element anywhere into your game. When you drop your platform into the level, make sure that the Y coordinate, which for some reason behaves like a Z coordinate, is set to zero. Otherwise it might be in front or behind the player and the player won't interact with the collider. You'll notice your platform already has a collider. That's the yellow box which tells Unreal that your player shouldn't be able to pass through the item. Copy and paste this tile around a little bit, drag it, and that way you can start designing your own level. Oh, and of course delete the old platforms as well. Of course you can create many more actors and drop them into your levels like this. By using different sprites, different settings, and different logic via graphs, many of which can easily look up online, you'll be able to create a whole host of challenging obstacles and rewarding collectibles. To further customize the level, we might also want to change the background. Do this simply by selecting background sprite in the world outliner and then changing the source sprite to one of your own making in details. I'm using a starry sky I created. The last and possibly most important thing we need to change though to make this generic platformer into our platformer is the main character. To handle this, we're going to need to use some more sprites which we're going to turn into animation. Now create two new subfolders, idle and walking. Into each, we're going to drag and drop our character sprites. 
Instead of using a sprite sheet, we're adding individual images and naming them in ascending numerical order to keep things nice and simple. Drop these into the relevant folders, right click on them and then select Sprite Actions, Create Sprites once again. We'll make our idle animation first. I only have two images for this, which is meant to simulate kind of breathing in a low frame pixel art manner. A quick tip, if you choose pixel art, you have far less work to do. To set this up, right click in the folder and choose animation, paper flip book. Flip books is just the term that Unreal uses for its animations. Name your new animation idle and then double click to open it up. Now in here, you're gonna head over to where it says sprite and you're gonna add two keyframes by hitting the plus button or you can just drag and drop your images into the kind of timeline down the bottom. This will add two members. You'll see the animation begins to cycle through those frames immediately. Right now though, this is seizure inducing. So turn down the frame rate to something like five and it looks a lot more like breathing. Save and then exit. And now you can do the precise same thing with your walking animation, keeping the frame rate higher of course and adding more keyframes. Save that and once they're both done, you can head over to find the 2D side scroller character actor or pawn over in 2D side scroller BP blueprints. Double click on this and you'll open up the editor again, but this time you might see something a little bit different, a graph. Remember that we chose graphs instead of C++ when we set up the project. Basically, this means that we're using a visual flowchart of sorts in the place of actual code, which is great if you don't know a lot of programming. Zoom out, find the box that says Handle Animation, and then find the drop-down menus under Select. These will look a little familiar. Idle animation and running animation. All you need to do is to click those buttons and swap them out for the ones you created. Finally, flick over to the viewport window and find the box that says source flipbook on the right once you've selected the player character. Switch that for your own idle animation and make sure to edit the scale under the transform heading on the right to match your character to the size of the original one. Remember to hit compile and save once that's done. And with that done, you should now see that it's your own character running around using your own animations on a level that you designed the look of and the layout of. To run this on your device, simply go to File, Package Project, and Android. You'll then be able to create an APK which you can pop onto your device to test. You should have a working basic platformer with touch input and animations. It's a pretty exciting start, bearing in mind we've only spent seven minutes. Remember though, you'll need to have set up all of this correctly to begin with. That means setting up Unreal in order to work with Android. My advice is to remove Gradle support for the build, as at the moment that isn't quite working correctly. I'd also advise using CodeWorks for Android to install all the necessary elements like the Java SDK. So thanks a ton for watching guys. Hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please share it around. Please leave a like, please comment down below. All that stuff helps us out immensely. You can find the full, more in-depth tutorial, the written version over at androidauthority.com. There you'll also find all the usual news, reviews, features, etc. For of course we are your source for all things Android.